because I love the sense of the world of racing, what um, Denny and Enzo can learn from the world of racing and apply it to real life. And I loved the voiceover. I loved the Enzo's voice, that in some ways he's so wise and so positive, in some ways so wrong and almost comedic too. And I found, uh, and I think uh, the reason the book is so successful is that voice, that it's a, a way of learning to deal with the world. And I, I do think this film lands at a time where the world needs redemptive films, films about good people uh, behaving as well as they can in difficult circumstances. I think the biggest task is how much voiceover, uh, how much do we show, how much do we tell. Uh, and so it was that. And also it's a tricky film in terms of the years passing. You know, if you think of it, the, the time span of the film is maybe 20 years. And we didn't want to get into aging people unnecessarily and so on. And in fact, we found that uh, the, 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 the visual of the dog growing older, the puppy version, the, uh, all the way to the older dog, and indeed... Um, Zoe growing up, that helps tell the story of time passing as much as anything. I think racing is such a sort of magnetic, glamorous, fast-paced world. It does tend to take over a lot of things. And of course, it's a hugely important element in the film, but not as important as this sense of family. And I think Milo understood that, as did I. And we talked a lot about being a father, I'm a father. And uh, I think that was one way I could help him. She loved Milo and Amanda as her on-screen parents. And she also understood the importance of bonding with the dog as well. Uh, and so we were very lucky in that. We had a, a day uh, when we were auditioning the top, I think, three young actresses to play the daughters. And it was the first time Milo and Amanda had worked together with me. And we all said, Ryan's the one for us, you know, and it was a wonderful day for me because I said, oh my God, they really look like a family. I really believe in them as a family from day one. I love that the family being observed by this dog that is also outside the family, but of course very much inside the family as well. Uh, and I think that's some of my favorite moments of the, of the film where we just, the dog is integrated. She, he feels that, like, ends it feels like uh, the daughter's big brother and so on. And, you know, I, I find that very, very moving. It was a very scary thing to take this film on where you, as a director, you often look at a script and you think, well, is that going to be an easy scene? That's going to be a hard scene. And every scene relied on the dog doing something intricate and detailed. And that was a scary thing because obviously you can't really rehearse in the conventional way. But I have to say, time and time again, Parker particularly just delivered what we needed in the scene. And he's a beautiful, intelligent, calm dog. And uh, I felt so blessed that uh, the dogs and their trainers uh, just r raised the game and delivered every single time. There are things to be learnt on the racing track that could be applied to real life. And uh, in some ways, Denny has a real instinct for the racing track. And he's constantly, he and Enzo, trying to adapt those lessons, like, you know, stay focused on the present and, uh, you know, drive into the rain rather than being afraid of it and so on, that are uh, lessons they can apply to life. Rehearsing was tricky because usually you get, a, uh, you get to do a scene and you sit around with the actors and the camera guys and work out what you do but in this case you couldn't rehearse the dog because you can't say to the dog you come in here and you, you uh so uh and then you'd work out with the trainers how the dog would achieve a b and c in a scene then you had to work out how to shoot it without showing the trainers whistling and waving to get the dog's attention there have been hundreds if not thousands of films in which uh we've seen births and marriages and deaths and so on but uh i don't think we've ever seen all of those from a dog's point of view in this way. And so I think that adds to the film. And it's a heart-wrenching scene when, uh, you know, they go to a funeral and, of course, the dog can't go to the funeral. Uh, so we just see him looking out of the window and just stay with him alone in the house, which is the dog's experience. So it's a sort of treat, a gift from Denny to Enzo. Uh, and, in fact, in the book or even in the original script, it was in Denny's car. And I think it was Jeff who said that, you know, it should be a special treat. Let's get a vintage Ferrari. And so that adds to the, the beauty of it. 
And that's an incredible piece of, mo of acting when at one point Denny says, you know, you've been a, 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 a good friend, a very good friend. And, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, the dog just puts his head on his shoulder, you know, and like, we, we couldn't believe it. You know, that's what a great actor would choose to do at that moment. You know what I mean? And... Um, uh, that was the, that wasn't something the train. Uh, that was the, what the dog did, you know. And it was so. And I think that's because he genuinely loved uh, Milo. Uh, 